Copyright Disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976 on YouTube. I do not own any of this. Their properties and their trademark belong to their respectable owners. This dinosaur documentary is not made for kids. It's a rated TV-14 documentary. It has blood and gore, animals mating, and animal deaths. So let's get started on the video. Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be finishing off every Mesozoic animal appeared in the documentary show or the miniseries. So, there are some Mesozoic animals that haven't been described until now. Back in the 2000s that were described, 2010s were described, and even 2020s. So, let's get started. Placerius, the only Dicynodont, first appearance in the documentary. You know, there's a whole lot of Dicynodonts that haven't appeared back then, but until now, in the 2000s and the 2010s, they rarely appear in any show, but they appear a lot now, so... Okay then, I give them props. And Coelophysis, once again, well, the model looks good for the most part, but except the body and the pronated hands and its wrists. Lungfish or the Triassic lungfish. The Cynodonts. It doesn't specify which species of Cynodont that lived in North America and the Triassic. But there is, however, a possibility that was based on of a Cynodont that's been described in 2020, it's not 100% accurate or not, so just want to find out. And Postasuchus, a Rasugian, and, and looks inaccurate. It did, because it's not quadruped, it's bipedal. It should have walked. And the, the wrists are, are in the wrong position. And Petitosaurus, a pterosaur. Once again, the head is too small and there's no pigno fibers. And it did not live in North America. It only lived in Europe. Likely a visitor. And Platyosaurus. And the model looks really creepy. Like. So Platysaurus couldn't move in a quadrupedal stance. However, this discovery was made after the release of this episode. So, yeah. And Platysaurus only lived in Europe, not in North America. Diplodocus Agnurognomus A pterosaur The one that looks inaccurate No pigno fibers and it did not live in North America It only lived in Europe 
I mean, come on. Why can't they pick? Why can't they pick the Terrasers from the Morrison Formation in the Triassic? Because that's very, a very weird choice to pick a Pterosaur from Europe. Dryosaurus. Here we have Ornithinelia. But it was now, but it was renamed Nanosaurus. Ornithalestes. Stegosaurus. Here we have Allosaurus fragilis. And the head that's inaccurate and the rest of the body. The Allosaurus should have looked like, but it was remodeled in Ballad of Big Al. Brachiosaurus. Eugetospondylus and the Leoporodon and there's a lot of inaccuracies like the body shape it does have a tail fluke and it's way too big why the big size? well if I'm going to take a guess the Leoporodon massive size is based on of a fragmentary fossil called Monster of Arambury, a Pliosaur, and the Cryptoclitus, a Plesiosaur. Again, it did not live out of land. It did not live out of the water. It didn't crawl on land. I mean, if they stayed on land, they would be crushed to death by the pressure. Sorry, wrong word or translation to say. Leptolevis, a prehistoric fish. Perisphictes, a, a not well known ammonite. A jellyfish, couldn't find a screenshot of it. Alphamosaurus, a ichthyosaur. But there has been some changes, like, you know, the coloration of ichthyosaurs, like. And the squids that the Ophimosaurus are preying on are called Cylinder Otopus, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. A prehistoric squid that lived in a, the early Jurassic to the Cretaceous. And Mapharynchus, a 
a weird looking pterosaur. It didn't have no pick, no fibers in the body shape, and uh, it could not skim the water's edge. And here we have Hybotus, a prehistoric shark. Mesolimnius, a prehistoric horseshoe crab. First appearance in the documentary. And the sea turtle that that the Uchidospondylus was eating. It doesn't specify what species of Jurassic sea turtle it is. So, in here you have Tabijara, a pterosaur. And, but it was reclassified as Tabidactylus. And here you have Ornithichiris. Here we have the North American Iguanodon, but this one wasn't described or have its name until 2008 that this North American Iguanodon is named Dakotodon. And here we have the European Iguanodon. Here we have a Plotocanthus, a notosaur that li lived with the North with Dakota Dawn, but they could have used Gastonia, but Plesiodon, a Pliosaur, once again doesn't have the tail fluke. Sorotherus, a prehistoric flea that feeds on the blood of pterosaurs, but Sorotherus lived in Asia not in Europe and etc. And here you have Utah Raptor and once again inaccurate. It doesn't have the feathers and the pronated wrists and the body shape and it did not live in Europe it only lived in North America. Besides, why didn't they pick Neophenator or other European carnivore dinosaurs? I mean, that didn't happen before, it happened way back, but that's a discussion for another time. And of course, well, of course the show didn't have the budget to make feathers or animated, because that would be really expensive, so, but there's no excuse for that. I'm Bjorn's Mortis, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. And here we have the unidentified pterosaur in Europe, that is the body shape of the Pteranodon. But this species wasn't described until 2005, and it's named Cachycephalus, if I'm pronouncing it correctly. That is the beak shape of one of the chiris and the head, and a crest of a Pteranodon. Lenalosaura, and there are a lot of inaccuracies. The two ornithopod like, but instead, and it didn't have a long tail. And here we have Colosuchus, a giant amphibian. And once again, another unidentified pterosaur. 
but there is a pterosaur that lived in Australia that was named and described, that was based on, and the Australian pterosaur was called Methunga, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, Methunga. And here you have the Polar Allosaur, or also known as Australopithecus. But this species wasn't described until 2009. And here you have Montaborosaurus. In an accurate, but the weird has this weird body shape, and the feet are a bit too short. And Strepidon, and they use the animal of Quanti. So Strepidon looks like this. And now, for the final and the sixth episode, Death of a Dynasty. And here we have Dytophodon. And it looks really inaccurate. That's a Tasmanian devil-like body. But, but, we, but we know today that Dytophodon is more otter-like appearance. And here you have another Titan, but was it renamed as Edmontosaurus Inetans? And here you have the Ankylosaurus, and it looks inaccurate. The body looks too ball shaped in armor. Well, I mean, to be fair, the only fossils that the Ankylosaurus was found in is only the skull and the tail club. And here we have Taurosaurus, a not well-known Ceratopsian, or the unpopular Ceratopsians. And here you have Triceratops Porces. And here you have a Dromaeosaur. But it doesn't specify which species it is. But some say it's a Dromaeosaurus, but here's one inaccuracy. Dromaeosaurus lived in the Campadian, so it should already been extinct. I mean, like I said, there are a lot of Mesozoic animals that haven't been described since fossils of them have been discovered back in the 90s and they were left in storage. Well, the, the two Dromaeosaurs have been described from Hell Creek and that are. A Caraptor in 2013 and Dakota Raptor in 2015. Again, they used the model of Ornithelia. But this ornithopod that's only in Hell Creek is Thessalosaurus. And here I have Quetzalcoatlus. And looks inaccurate. Doesn't have the as dark it body shape
and here I have a Dinosuchus, an inaccurate. It only lived during the Capadian, so this it should already been extinct. Dinolicia, a prehistoric snake. And looking back, well, it was okay. I mean, there were a lot of not described dinosaurs or Mesozoic animals that I haven't even heard about. Like, I was surprised. Like, the Australopinator. That got me shocked. I mean, since I was a kid, what kind of allosaur lives in the South Pole region of Australia? Because first I thought it was an allosaur, but it was a Megaraptoran. So, it was okay. So anyways, like and subscribe. Hit the, bell, hit the bell for notified for new videos for new content. And uh, yeah. On next time, I'll be doing Chase by Dinosaurs. And later, When Dinosaurs Roamed America. But, there is a Dinosaur TV show that no one has ever made a review on for many years, and I found it. So, because I'm going to be doing a review of that particular dinosaur TV show that no one has ever heard of for many years. Until next time, see you later, guys.